The quality of infrastructure such as road, rail, airport, seaport, hospitals, schools, communication and housing come to play when nations are ranked on development. The reason is not far-fetched. Good infrastructure translates to a better life and well-being, efficiency in business transactions and economic growth. According to the World Economic Forum, Hong Kong has one of the most developed infrastructure, followed by Singapore, which not only inherited good infrastructure from its colonial masters, but made efforts to keep developing them through a well-thought-out funding process which gave priority to capital expenditure. However, in most developed nations such as Nigeria, the case appears turned on its head. The ability to design a program, the ability to implement the program, the ability to monitor it successfully, and ensure that what you budget money for is spent. Uh, that had been, for me, one of the greatest failings of infrastructure in our country. Nigeria in its early days had over 3,000 kilometers of rail network, which dwindled to a few hundred meters due to neglect. This is now costing the federal government several billions of dollars to resuscitate. In the next two to three years, we will see how much we would have tried to complete the Ibadan Tokano. The more we complete, the more we're able to move these cargoes uh, out of the road so that we can save, we can save, we can save the roads. With over 90% of human and cargo movement concentrated on road transportation, increased pressure has turned Nigerian roads to some of the worst and deadliest in the world, according to the UNDP. Efforts to change the narrative appear on track. If you've been following my ministry, you will see that we have something called the Highway Development Management Initiative, which is to offer about 12 roads, totaling about 1,920 kilometers for concession, possible tolling, uh, ambulance service, tow trucks, lane marking, uh, and tow plazas. While Nigeria is set to require about $15 billion annually to bridge the infrastructure deficits, the amount budgeted in 2024 works, housing, transportation, and power was approximately 612 billion naira, which is less than $2 billion. Even if oil price goes to above 100, still it will no longer be enough to provide us with sufficient infrastructure. It doesn't give us uh, enough to uh, fill the gap that you mentioned. The situation is made worse by plummeting oil prices, notwithstanding the various measures put in place, including the sovereign intervention funds, infrastructure banks, very helpful for infrastructure development. Finance and infrastructure experts say government must begin to look elsewhere for solutions. Um, what the government can do is to provide the, uh, the environment to bring non-public uh, sector resources, to bring pure private sector resources into infrastructure. With the government hoping to revamp the power sector, build new deep sea ports, extend the rail network to about 3,000 kilometers across various regions and provide social housing schemes and workable health, education and communication sectors. It will require a very deep pocket and the necessary political will to make these lofty ideas a reality. Chris Elams, Channels Television News.